One of the biggest lessons MNCs learned after the COVID crisis was the need to reduce their dependence on China and to create alternate supply lines. But the reality is that India is not the only market where these supply lines can be situated. They can go to different other countries, in countries like Vietnam, uh, Bangladesh, Indonesia, trying very hard to pull manufacturing out, as also is Japan, which has created a separate fund. So, how effectively are we being able to woo international capital? I want to put that question first to Uday Kotak. From all the deals that you're seeing in the air, is there a real sense of wanting to use the post-COVID scenario to move manufacturing into India or do you think once again this is an opportunity that presents itself but an opportunity that may slip it out of our hands? Mr. Kota. Raul, divide this into two parts. Part one is manufacturing to the domestic segment and second is manufacturing which is competitive to be able to export to the world. We need to combine part one and part two, whether it is strategic MNC capital or domestic capital. The road to India's sustainable success and the true success of Atirbar Parat will be if India is able to make products and services not only for Indians, but for the entire world. That is the true test of self-reliance and self-sustainability. And in my mind, even if foreign direct investment comes into India, it must not be only for producing products for the Indian consumer. That is an added advantage. We must get this as the base to be able to supply to the world. Therefore, our competitiveness strategy for an Atma Nirbhar Bharat is very significantly dependent on our export strategy. I think the time has come for India to really grasp exports as a key part of India's sustainable competitiveness. And if we can get exports right, we would also be able to produce goods for our consumers and our markets. And therefore, exports is the key and we must do whatever it takes to improve our export competitiveness as a strategy, whether it's from foreign direct investment or domestic investment, both for domestic and global markets. No, but can I get you to build on that? Because the Indian domestic market is a captive market and very naturally, given the size of our economy, given the number of people in our country, there will be a certain part of manufacturing that will want to come to India but to service the domestic market. But no country in the history of bottom capital has become advanced or has grown fast without being able to export competitively internationally. So. You're saying we need to do more, and I'd like to understand from you, Mr. Kotak, between what is being said and what more needs to be done, what would you like to see tangibly for India to be able to exploit that market? Because if it's just for domestic consumption, then it's really suboptimal utilization of the opportunity that COVID has provided us. Rahul, if you go back to the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the big mantra in India was import substitution. And in the bargain, what we got is products and services with a protectionist market for serving Indian consumers at times or most of the times with substandard goods because these goods were not facing global competition. What we need to do is actually provide benefits and incentives to ensure that the goods which we make are competitive globally and also appropriate for the Indian consumer. And the big change between 70s and 2020 is the Indian consumer today will not accept a subpar product unless there is a protectionism from imports. And that I don't think is right from an India strategy, protectionism at any cost. We must make sure that domestic manufacturing, while being encouraged, is competitive enough for exports. We should not be thinking of closing the doors for imports, but making stuff which can be exportable. And for that, within the framework of including bilateral treaties rather than multilateral treaties, India must reach out to the world. There are opportunities. If you just take the case of UK, they are coming out of Brexit, Europe, US, all of them are in an anti-China world, much more open to engage and do bilaterals with India. Why can't we go out there, do bilateral treaties, make Indian business effective? give them uh, requirements for reducing their cost of operations, as Ajay and my colleagues said, and do whatever it takes to reduce our cost of doing business. There is a huge element of time. It, in India, uh, 
return on time invested needs to be improved. Return on time invested stands for ROTI. We have to get our time invested getting better returns and make ourselves competitive and break the barriers. This is the time. COVID is a challenge, but COVID is an opportunity. That's interesting. I, I, I'm just noting that down. Return on time invested or ROTI India needs to improve on that metric, says Uday Kotek. But Chandrajit Banerjee, of all the companies uh, that the government claims are talking about moving manufacturing to India, how much do you see uh, of supply chains that are being moved out of China actually come into India, set up shop here, not just for domestic manufacturing and domestic consumption, but as part of their global plans? So we need to see it in uh, 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 two contexts. Uh, you know, one is how much of it is moving anywhere else. Uh, I mean, let's not just look at how much of it is coming into India. How much of it anyway is moving to other places? And we also need to see how much of it can can come into India over a period of time. And not just China. Let's 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 also look at how India can become an attractive destination per se. Uh, uh, gener uh, 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 not just what is coming out of India, but going forward. And I think there are a few things that we need to do. Uh, certainly, as time goes on, we need to enhance our manufacturing competitiveness. And I think we are really working towards that very strongly. Uh, how do we have uh, certain facilitative policies to really alleviate uh, higher costs, so to say, be it on the land side or the rebel labor regulation side or power or the logistics side or uh, and also capital. So these are extremely important. We need to also focus on this entire gamut of uh, the cost of doing business besides what we uh, have been, been focusing on ease of doing business. And I think today we are seeing a very strong focus coming on, onto that uh, onto that over, uh, over the last few months, uh, uh, very, very strong, strongly. Be it, uh, you know, we need to see, look at even things like, uh, you know, uh, what I meant as an example, so to say, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, to reduce cost of Indian products. Uh, uh, say, for instance, uh, you know, the cross subsidies that we have, in power tariffs or even things like uh, cross subsidies in railway freight or fuel costs uh, so, uh, hours need to be globally competitive uh, uh, reducing the um, uh, toll say for instance on the highways and so on and so forth so easy conversion of land is another very very important area when we talk to these uh, potential foreign direct investors who are coming into india so digitization of our land records so all of this is are going to be important so what's happening now is we are looking at a few champion sectors say for instance the government of india is working closely with the indian industry very closely with the indian industry where there is a committee there are focused committee there are subsectoral committees so 12 plus 8 sectors 12 sectors sub sectors within this which are being seen how we can process it. And one of the two great, important ways that we are going to process this and take this forward is to see how we can bring the states into this story. Because uh, investments at the end of the day are going to go to states. So concessions in terms of like I, what I said, in terms of lands, et cetera, land, etc., are by and large state subjects. And it is important for India to also change its uh, in, in the process in which we are also attracting these foreign investment. Other countries, as you know very well, Look at a company or a, a, a one particular investment and give concessions and give uh, 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 lays out the red carpet for that one particular company, which is a large scale investment coming, which triggers a, 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 a long supply chain. We need to make that exception and not make it into an issue as if uh, uh, as if uh, uh, you know uh, inappropriate uh, uh, exceptions are being ruled uh, rolled out to a particular company we need to understand that and hand over these companies to come into okay, India. let me let That's me build on India that let me build on that while while this may be music to the uh, to the ears of someone like a chandrajit banerji ajay piramal it will also be uh, cannon fodder for the opposition that will attack the government once again and say suit boot ki sarkar, they're not interested in the common people, they're making uh, exceptions and these are all Modi's friends, etc. So how do you deal with the reality that other companies, other countries would be willing to make individual uh, exemptions for big ticket investments, whereas if you make them in an Indian milieu, the chances are that the opposition will come and chase the government down and throw barbs like suit boot ki sarkar. So how do you deal with that? So I don't, uh, I think that we have many other strengths. One is that I think the domestic market itself is very large and that is a big plus that we have. 
And if we can do ease of really doing business and to take to uh, Uday's point of roti, if we can do that and the return on the time invested is higher, I think we don't need to do many special things for any other, uh, for a particular company. I would not be in favor of that. I think there are many things. Our market is big enough. We have the skilled manpower, which many people do not have. We have the whole base of manufacturing, of engineering, of software in this country. We build upon all that. And I think if we just make it easier to do business is what is uh, to me more important. But one thing I think I need to highlight is that my concern for us, Atmanirbhar Bharat, and especially if you want to invest in manufacturing is, my worry is that there is not enough long-term capital for any projects in India. When we were setting up industries in the early days, you talked about 70s, 80s, 90s, you had several development finance institutions, whether it was the IDBI, the ICICI, IFCI, and so on. Today, there is no single institution which is giving long-term funding, whether it is the public sector institutions or the private sector. So where will you get long-term funding to set up projects, whether it, the problems that we are seeing with infrastructure projects, for example, which are like 10-year, 15-year paybacks, there is no funding available. And even for shorter-term projects, if we don't get funding... Oh, Mr. Mr. Uday Kotak, do you want to respond to that? That if you've got a project with a long gestation period, uh, Ajay Piramal rules the fact that long-term funding is no longer available as it used to be in the past? I agree with Ajay completely on that and I have a recommendation which I would make. India has three financial institutions 100% owned by the government of India. They are NABARD, SIDBI and infrastructure finance company called IIFCL. These are three institutions 100% owned by India. There are global examples of KFW Germany, Bandes Brazil, Korea Development Bank, China Development Bank. We must look at these models and I would strongly recommend building of development finance institutions in agriculture and rural economy through NABARD, infrastructure through IIFCL and for MSME through SIDBI. And so far these institutions have been essentially refinance institutions. I think time has come for building expertise along with capital provided by the state, keep them 100% government owned and build NABARD, SIDBI and infrastructure finance company into large development financial institutions at this stage and take a view with reference to public sector banks separately. I would go ahead and recommend at the same time with reference to a few, few public sector banks, do not sell their shares but announce that these public sector banks can raise more capital. And when they raise more capital, the denominator of capital goes up, which may bring down their government percentage on a numerator basis to below 50, except that strengthen the capital base of some of the PSU banks, let them go below 50 through raising up new capital, not selling by government shares. So on the one hand, be in maybe six, seven, eight public sector banks instead of 12, at the same time, put capital in three development financial institutions, NABARD, SIDBI, and IIFCL. Interesting, but even before the COVID pandemic struck, private investments uh, by domestic companies in our country was, were languishing. Uh, companies were dealing with excess capacity. Demand was already low. And all of that has taken a very big hit. Uh, because of the recession that's been sparked off by the pandemic and the lockdown. So in that context, Mr. Kirloska, now when the expectation is that there must be new investment so that uh, it leads to job creation, it leads to us working towards, uh, uh, it works towards us becoming more Atmanirbhar, a lot of industrialists, regardless of what they may say on television, of it are actually dealing with excess capacity and low demand. So how strong is the appetite and the desire to go out and actually make new investments? See, we'll, we have to make new investments to go ahead. The COVID is a short-term issue. Hopefully by next year, vaccine will come out, it will go away. And then we, we can't just sit on our, uh, you know, we, ha we, have, to, we have to move ahead. Uh, 
in my opinion and in the numbers that I see, in, especially in manufacturing, in auto parts and engineering manufacturing, we are very, very competitive. We manufacture uh, capital equipment in India, uh, bulk of the raw material supplies available in India. We lose out on the supply chain, in the costs in the supply chain, sometimes in taxation, sometimes in logistics, sometimes in infrastructure. And also, the, uh, what Uday said about time of doing business in getting these approvals done in time. So the overall uh, uh, capital is stuck for a longer time. The, the, the biggest difference, I, I keep competing for projects uh, with my partners in Toyota to invest, and I keep asking them to invest in India for export. And we've been successful over the years in some projects. But my competition with the countries around the world when we do this is not so much the cost or the quality. It's really the time taking. Time taken that will be taken to get all the permissions and to actually implement and start. In a lot of other countries, it's much, much faster. Uh, so so on, on, a, on a cost competitive and a quality competitive basis, especially in manufacturing, I think we are well placed. We just have to make harder efforts how to reduce the time okay. and how to reduce the bureaucracy. Uh, Rajan Navani, do you want to build on what can potentially be done to reduce what Uday Kotak is calling the return on time investment or actually increase the return on time investment by reducing the amount of time it takes to get something done? You know, I think that, uh, like, you know, technology is the, is the key word, right? I think it is something that has brought about efficiency at, at pretty much every level. And I think if we can adopt that a lot more if we are able to put in systems that use technology uh, that can make this, you know, we have this virtuous cycle, like, you know, what the Prime Minister talked about today, about Atma Nirmar Bharat, to me, was an emotion, right? It's on Independence Day, it's a, it's an appeal on patriotic grounds to all cross-sections of society in India, right? Civil society, industry, and government really working together to make, you know, some of these things happen. I don't think it is something that can happen independently. You know, and I must say, Rahul, that, you know, the India 75 initiative, it started when India turned 60, right? And CIA led it. And since then, one of the key things that the Prime Minister was then Chief Minister, you know, spent a lot of time trying to appreciate and understand what that would mean for India. So the journey that started with inclusiveness, you know, been bringing all Indians into the fold, and now coming to Atma Nirvarta, you know, the self-confidence that we should have as we move forward is, is extremely important. So, you know, to, to Vikram's point and to Uday's point, ultimately foreign capital can come in, you know, we might be able to reduce the, the time it takes for our investments to flower and all of that, but unless and until we okay. all are able to put things together, uh, you know, in a very virtuous cycle, this is not going to happen that easily, but I think Given there are 24 months to India 75, and I think the Prime Minister referred to it several times, you know, appealed to a country to stand up. I think if we are all serious and we are able to have more discussions and really outline and clear out some of the, you know, issues that might be there, I think we can make rapid progress. You know, the journey towards becoming an Atman Nirbhar country is a long and arduous one, but we've had an engaging conversation, several good ideas and takeaways now. The key challenge is always for a country like India is to turn talk into action, to talk, turn intent into reality and to reduce the, just the amount of time it takes to get things done and to improve the roti situation as it were. Uh, for giving us roti and for uh, this interesting conversation, Mr. Uday Kotak, Chandrajit Banerjee, Vikram Kirloska, Rajai Piramal and Rajan Navani, thank you very much for joining us on this special broadcast. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for tuning in. News and updates continue on the other side. Stay with us. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.